Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Ticket Thursdays. And this is the seventh episode in the series, so if you're interested, please check out the playlist for IT tickets. And this episode is special because we are focusing on troubleshooting the common account issues in Active Directory since we have been setting up Windows Server and Active Directory Labs recently. So I've compiled the most common Active Directory issues that I've encountered at work. So if you're interested in today's video, please keep on watching. And without further ado, let's get started. So if you're interested in following along, just make sure that you have all of this set up so you can replicate all of the issues and also the resolutions. Okay, so let's get started. And for our first issue, this is probably the most common issue that you can see in your workplace. This is when a user is not able to log in and receives this message that their account is locked out. This usually happens when the user just changed the password and can't remember the new password that they typed in or they just forgot what their password was and they typed the wrong password too many times. Okay, so to fix this lockout, we should go to our Active Directory. If you open ADUC or Active Directory Users and Computers and we can search for East Charmer. This is what we typically do because sometimes there's usually a lot of OUs and users. So if you open East Charmer's account, you would see under properties under account tab that her account was locked and is currently locked on this Active Directory domain controller. So this is where we can see if someone was locked out because they typed the wrong passwords. So the fix for this is easy, but it depends on the situation of the user. If they remember their password, just check on this unlock account and click on apply and okay but if the user couldn't remember the password that they used you have to reset their password so what we can do is to right click on the username click on reset password and then type in the new password for example we can give the user a temporary password and make sure to check this so that they can type in the password that they want to use and then make sure to check this too so that we can also unlock the user's account and click on OK. Now you can see that it has been changed. So let's ask East Charmer to type in the temporary password that we've set up for her Okay, and see if it works. Okay, so as you can see in here, user must change password at next logon. You can see that the system is asking for the user to change it now. So if they click on OK, they can type the new password that they want. Okay, so what if I'll give you another scenario? For example, this user, you just fixed the account lockout issue. And then after 5 to 10 minutes, they came back and reported that they are locked out again. And then you reset the password and did all the fixing. And then it happened again, like maybe 20 minutes after you fixed it. And then it keeps recurring until it's been happening three, four times a day now. So sometimes there's issue like that, that it persists even if you are fixing it. So clearly there's something that is locking out this account. Usually what happens is some users log into different computers, for example, because they're moving around. And if they happen to change their password recently, some computers might still cached in the old password and still try to log into it. There's probably some background process or some applications that is still using the old password, which is a bad password now, and it didn't sync properly into our domain controller or our system when we reset the password or they changed the password. So that happens sometimes and it causes a recurring issue like this. How do you fix that and what do you do to resolve that issue? So the first step in resolving that issue is to find which computer is causing the lockouts. If they have logged into multiple computers, for example, like three to five computers, sometimes it's hard to say or to tell it which one is causing it. But as admins, we have different tools that we can access and use to help us with this kinds of issue. Okay, so let's go back to our server and we are going to use the tool event viewer. Okay, so if you open that on the Windows server on your domain controller, which has your active directory and open this, this is a tool where you can see all the logs for different applications, security logs for those accounts that have been logging in. So what you want to do is go to the left side and expand the Windows logs and click on security in here. And as you can see, Here's everything that has been logging on to our system with the different accounts in here. And 
to make it easier you have to find the account that have been locked out which was the east charmer account from earlier so what you want to do is to go to the right side and click on filter current log in here and as you can see in here in this logs we have different information like what kind of log is this the date and time the source event id and categories so what we want to filter this will be based on the event id so just to make it simple if you're looking for certain things windows has a particular event id for that that you should be familiar with so for lockouts in our domain the event id is 4740 and you should type it in where it says event id in here 4740 and if you click on ok you can see that there is one account here with the event id so if you look into more details in here it will show you which account name just to verify if this is the correct account sometimes there's going to be more than one account with this event id so let's verify that it has been east charmer and it happened today on this time so we are sure that it's this account and if you scroll down at the bottom it will show you the computer name that's causing the lockout so earlier she has been locked out from this computer and you can pinpoint which one is the computer that is causing this lockout so at least we have identified this very important step and the next thing to do is to go to that computer and to try to restart it and log in with the new password and just make sure that she doesn't have any application that is still using old passwords okay so let's move on to our second issue for today so the user cannot lo log into the domain and receives account is disabled message so this is very specific it will tell you that your account has been disabled so this sometimes happen if someone accidentally disabled your account or there is a script that disabled it or there can be a lot of factors that can cause into this as well so it's also going to be an easy fix for this this is pretty straightforward error message so what we want to do is go to active directory so what you want to do is to find that user for example the name is lacos in here and as you can see in here you can see an arrow in here which is a sign that the account has been disabled and if we right click on this just to see the properties you would see in here that there is an enable account what you're going to do is just to click on enable account and if you click on refresh it will now be enabled so that's an easy fix if you see that issue Okay, for our third issue, the user account has expired. So for example, Barry has tried to log in and then got the message that his account has expired. This doesn't happen often, but sometimes if an account has an expiration for when they're allowed to log in, sometimes this happens to contractors or part-time workers or interns. I've seen this happen to people who are not full-time because they just have like a limited time to work. And sometimes if their employment has been extended and the HR probably forgot to inform IT, usually that's what's going to cause this issue where an account will be expired. So this is also going to be an easy fix in Active Directory. Okay, so let's go to Active Directory and look for the account that is having this issue. So let's click on Barry Allen. So just double click on it. And if you go to account in here at the bottom, you can see that his account was set to expire last Sunday. That's why he can't log in now because the account expired already. So what we can do is to change this or to select never. But this also depends on the situation of the account. The next step for this would be to ask HR or their manager if their contractor each an intern or part-time when their contract will end so you can set another date like one month from now for example or if they have been transferred or moved as a full-time employee then you can set this to never expire and then if you click on apply that should fix the issue so if Barry tries to log in you should be able to get into his account now Okay, so let's move on to our fourth issue. 
So a user cannot access resources they should have permissions for. So sometimes there's users that will get access denied if they try to open or make new folders or edit on any of the shared resources and they will get this error message. So this is also a pretty common issue, especially for new hires because they sometimes would lack permissions that might have been missed when they were onboarded. Okay, so before we fix this and go into Active Directory, I'm just going to show you what Barry's issue is. So Barry is a new hire for HR department and he's been having a lot of issues lately. So he went to the shared folder and opened HR and tried to add a new folder and he's getting access denied tried to add a new file and getting access denied. So he's supposed to create new documents for the HR shared network, but he's getting this and he asked for IT for help with this issue. So what you're gonna do is to go to the server and usually what we typically do is to check on his account and see what his memberships are and go to the member of tab. And as you can see, he doesn't have any memberships in here. So what we typically do is we look into another staff in the same department as the users having the issue. So Lacos, for example, is an HR senior in here and I'm going to open her account and just compare it side by side with Barry's and see what membership he is missing. So Lacos has HR staff in here. So I typically just mirror and add what the other department staff has that the user is missing so since hr staff makes sense because barry is also hr i'm just going to copy this and add it to his membership and apply okay so we can also go into the shared folder in here and open hr and right click and go to properties because this is what folder he's having issues with so if you remember file sharing from before let's check into our ntfs sharing because that's a more detailed permission so if you go to security in here and as you can see hr staff service account is in here and it shows that they have full control in here so earlier, Barry wasn't a member of HR staff, which he's supposed to be in. Now that we have added him, he's, he should have the permissions now. And this is also how we can verify that we have added the correct permissions for him. Okay, for our last issue, this is pretty common for computer accounts, not really for user accounts. So this is what you normally see if like a computer has been out of the network or disconnected from the network for quite a while like months this is the message that you will see the security database on server does not have a computer account for this workstation relationship so this typically happens if the computer fell off the domain because it hasn't been connected to the network for a long time so this fix is easy if you have identified this error message and if you usually see this keyword workstation trust relationship you would know what to do but this just take a lot more steps than our previous examples the first step that we have to do is to log in with our local admin password and account. And this is not the domain account that we use because we can longer use our domain accounts because this computer is not seen in the network anymore. Okay, so you should log in with the local admin account in here. Also, don't forget to put in period slash so it will sign in, sign you into the local account in here because if you don't, it will still try to sign you into the domain. Okay. okay, so the next step once you're in with the local admin password is to go to the file explorer, click on right click on this PC, click on properties. What you want to do is to get into where you can rename the PC. For example, if you scroll this down, this is where we change our host name in here and our domain. So the next step would be to add the computer as a member of the work group. So I'm just going to type in work group in here. This is what we call undomaining it. So we are going to completely remove it to the domain so we can add it back later on. Okay, so it's going to give you a warning that you should know the local admin password because you're not going to be able to log in with the domain. So we are fine because we already logged in with the local admin here. So let's just wait for it to finish and it's going to ask for your credentials for your domain admin. Okay, once it took the credentials, it's just going to...
process everything now you're in the work group and it's going to ask you to reboot to apply the changes and then just restart it okay so the next step is to connect it back to the domain but there's a tricky part in here that i'm going to show you so same step go to the properties and go to where you can rename the pc change the computer name now we want to connect it back to the domain and type in the domain name for your company the tricky part in here is if you want to keep the same name for the computer like comp01 this is going to cause a conflict and this will not let you add the computer to the domain so for example i'm going to click on this and just enter your domain password this error message will show up because the name already exists in Active Directory and in the system. So before you reconnect the computer to the domain, make sure to delete this first because it's going to cause a conflict later on and it's not going to let you add it back to the domain. So just right click on it and click on delete. And once you try to rejoin the domain, you should be able to do so without any errors. Okay, so now let's try to log in as our domain account and see if this be connected to the domain so that would be it for today's video i hope you learned something and if you have any questions please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below and i hope to see you guys in the next ticket thursday episode thank you so much for watching